Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how you can take a JPEG image and turn it into a laser ready file. And uh, that would be perfect for engraving, for cutting and for doing inlays. So here I am on Google Images and let's say I'm looking for a flower image. So I'm typing in flower and I'm getting all kinds of crazy images and these don't look like good laser images. So there's a few terms that I'm looking for when I'm looking for an image. One of them being silhouette. So I will type in flower silhouette. And then we already get way better images now. So silhouette is a good term to look for. Another term that is good for a laser engraving will be clip art. So flower clip art, you see, we also gives us some really good finds. Another good one I like to use, it's line art. So flower line art, also some really cool results. Now it's important to look at these guys and you see they are actually not free to use. You can purchase them on Etsy, Amazon, stock um, websites and so on, but these are not free for you to just uh, right click on it and save them as an image to your downloads. I do not suggest you do that. You want to purchase them, you want to get legal rights to use these images. And if you want to find free images, then I suggest in Google Images when you type in flower, let's say uh, clip art, then you also type public domain. And now we will get images that we are allowed to use because they are public domain. So they're kind of a little bit mixed in. Some of them are public, some are not. Like this one, you will see it says public domain. So if I right click on this one and then save image to downloads, we saved it. Let's see if we can find another one. This is another public domain one. So I can right click on it, save image to downloads. And um, another place where I like to go look for images for engraving is public domain vectors. And here, let's type in uh, flower clip art again. And then we get some results. Let's see if we can find anything good that we could use. You can use colored images as well. It doesn't have to be black and white. I like this one. So if I click on it, you can see here, this is public domain. So we are allowed to use it, then we don't get in trouble. I'll right click on it and save image to downloads. Let's see if we can find one more. So I am going to scroll through it and then I'll show you how I edit these images to get them ready. So I like this one. I'm going to click on it. It says public domain. I am allowed to use it. Right click on it and save image to downloads. Now let's go into Liburn. I like to use Liburn to edit my images and get them ready for laser. And even though I use an X tool um, laser and I use the X tool creative space when I laser engrave stuff, I like to use Liburn when I edit my images. So now I can go into my downloads and this is the images we downloaded. And let's take this one, for example, drag it into our canvas. If that happens to you, click on this button over here, brings it back up. And you can see this is a terrible image, very pixelated. But if we right click on it and go to trace image, uh, Lightburn has this really cool trace image here. And as you can see, it does a really good job. I can click on this fade image so I can see my tracing better. And it's looking fantastic. Maybe I'm missing a tiny little bit here. Let's see if I can get that part to come back in there. I'm adjusting the threshold. There you go. I think that is a better selection. And now click OK. And I will take and drag my image out, select the JPEG, delete it. And this is our image ready for lasering. Now, you can see this is set on fill. If I want to cut it, I'll go to line and this is my what my image looks like. I have these tiny little points over here. So if I want to remove those, I'll have to select my image, then right click on it and ungroup. So now I can work on every little piece individually. I can select these two guys, delete it. I can select this guy, delete it. Maybe this one, because this will just be trouble, especially if I'm cutting. And now it looks good. Now I can select them all and group them back. And if I want to engrave it, I'll put it on fill. 
Now, if you, when you put your layers on fill, if you don't see it already filled, don't worry about it. That's because I changed the setting into my light burn. When you go into light burn preferences, I toggled on this filled rendering. If I turn it off and I click OK, you see, even when it's on fill or line, it looks like line. And the only way to preview it is to click on this preview button. Well, I don't like keep clicking on that preview button. I want to see it when I'm on fill. I want to see exactly what it's going to look like. So that's why going on light burn preferences, toggle the fill rendering. Now it allows me to preview it directly without having to go on that preview button. So that is one image. Let's take another one. I am going to erase this. Let's just drag another image. And then I'll show you a couple of other tips and tricks that you can do. Let's take this one. We'll drag it here and right click on it. Trace image. I'm going to leave the default setting. Just say, OK, I'm going to drag out and erase the JPEG one. And there you go. This is our image line and fill. And I have this pink octopus. Let's drag that one into Liburn. And when you drag it into Liburn, you will see that it turns black and white. And then you can right click on it. We'll trace the image. And there's our image all traced. Click OK. Pull out the JPEG and erase it. And there is our image from a colored image. Now, this one was pretty easy. We didn't have to do any kind of changes. Let's choose a little bit more complicated one. Oh, by the way, this one, it looks like it has a frame. You will have to ungroup it and then, you know, erase the frame so you don't have it in the picture. I have this really pixelated image over here. And I'm going to trace it just like we did before. And I'm going to keep the default setting and delete the JPEG. Now let's say we want to edit this image. Let me put it online so you can see what's happening. This is a holly branch. And let's say we want these balls to be attached to the branch to make it onto one image without having all these separate shapes. How can I make this shape be part of the branch? Well, first of all, we have to ungroup it. So for that, we have to select the image, right click and ungroup. Click outside. Now let's go move this ball. So I'll take my select tool and I just want to move it overlapping a little bit with the main branch. Now I'm going to select both of these shapes and go over here and weld it. And when I do that, you see now they're weld together and now they're all part of the same branch. Let's do the same over here. I will click on this shape and maybe overlap it a little bit on this side. And then this shape is already selected. I'll hold out shift to click this one and I'll weld it. And there you go. Now I will take this one, maybe place it over here. Hold down shift, click on this line and now weld them together. And there you go. Let's see what it looks like right now that it looks good. So then if I go to fill, there you go. Now they are not separated. They're part of the same branch. Now what if we want to change some of these designs maybe in the middle like this one over here we want to make it wider let's say we want to make that side wider well let's go back to line let's zoom in in here we are still ungrouped and now I can just select this line and go over to the nodes which is this uh, toggle over here this button over here so now we see all the nodes that makes this shape as you can see I can move them around just like that I can change the shape and then every node, this is a node, every node has two of these lines. This is how you uh, manipulate the curve of the line on this side of the node. And this is the other side. Now, the shorter the arm is, the more you see like the curve is next to this node. If I make the uh, line longer, now the curvature is on the other side. So just play around with it and, you know, learn how those things work. Now the node, I can move it like I showed you before. I can also delete it. If I just select the node and click D, that will delete it. If I want to put a node back or put somewhere else, I will click where I want the node and click I and that will insert a new node. And there you go. We're back to where we were. 
If I want to delete a whole bunch of nodes at once, I can select the ones I want to delete and click D. And now we're left with this. If you make a mistake and you want to undo, just Command Z will take you back to where you were. And that's how you will edit nodes so you can, you know, change the design however works for you. Now let me show you something else that uh, my friend Sandrine at Studio Artisan was struggling with the other day and I showed it to her and I think you might like to see this one as well. I have an image here of some leaves if I can find it. There you go. So I'm just going to drag a leaf over here and let's say we want to engrave this leaf and then just cut the outline of the leaf. Well, first we have to select our image and right click trace the image. And I'm going to say OK and delete my JPEG here. So this one will be ready for engraving. You see it's on fill. Uh, what I want to do, I want to create that line on the outside for cutting. So after we engrave it, we can cut it. Well, the way I do that, first I'll set it on line and I'm going to change this to black so I can see my lines better. Then what I will do is select the image and I will ungroup it because I need to work with just the outline. All right. So now they are ungrouped. I can just choose my outline and this time I'll go Command D to duplicate it. And now it's still selected even though you don't really see it. And there's two outlines there on top of each other. And this one, I'll make it red. So now if I go back to my first layer and change that one to fill, we have an engrave and we also have, if you look closely, the outline, it's on red. I can select the outline and I'll show you if I drag it out. This is just the outline that we will be cutting after the engraving. So this is how you'll create an outline to an image so you can engrave and cut. I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.